Thank you, dear Father, for just allowing us to be in the house of God today to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, I pray you bless every home and every family, God, that's here today. And Father, the ones that may have come by our way, Lord Jesus, that are just dealing with chaos in their life, maybe just dealing with a problem. God, that they may be burdened and troubled in their soul. Father, I pray that you give them right now the peace that passes all understanding. And Father, that they may leave this place much differently than the way they came. And Father, I pray for the preaching hour. I pray for the songs of Zion. That God, that you would stir us one more time this side of heaven. 
We only have a few more grains of sand left in the hourglass of time before it's everlasting too late. God, the trumpet of God is going to sound. God's people is going to rise up in a moment in the twinkle of an eye. We'll be, we'll be caught away. Father, raptured from this place into our heavenly home. And Father, for this time, God, that you've allotted to us, Lord Jesus, this side of heaven, God, that you'd give us the strength and the courage, God, to be able to carry on the cross of Calvary and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I pray you bless everyone here. God, everyone that's under the sound of my voice, God, that you just touch them one more time this side of heaven and we'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor for all that's done. In Christ's name we pray and the people of God said, Amen. give the Lord praise.
speak of when we speak of grace is we speak of mercy as well someone defined it like this mercy is not getting what you deserve aren't you thankful for mercy this morning but grace goes further than that grace is getting what you do not deserve see I deserve judgment I deserve wrath, but God showed me mercy. Today, I'm a born again child of God, an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's grace. Amen. Let's worship him in this morning.
aren't you thankful for the mercy of God? I believe we need to give the Lord another hand clap of praise for God's mercy. You're here today and I'm here today by the mercy of God. And when we get that in our spirit and we get all that out of our mind, we'll have more of an appreciation for the grace of God when we understand the mercy of God. And he's just a good, good father that way. He doesn't give us what we deserve, but he gives us mercy. I was saying this just the other day. I'm, a lot of people say, well, God's just not fair. I'm glad he ain't fair. Because if he's fair, I'd be in hell with my back broke today. But I'm thankful for the mercy and the grace of an almighty God this morning. He's good to me. I say he's real good to me. He may not be so good to you, and you may not understand it, but boy, I tell you, every morning I get up, I thank God for the mercy and the grace of God. Thank you for being so good to me. Man, he was good to me when I wasn't even good to myself. So let's stand all over the building and give our Father, our good, good Father. If you hadn't had the opportunity to worship this morning, boy, I tell you what, it'd be a good song you just to cry and lift our hands and give God praise today. Oh, now listen. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead.
see you later at a cold grave side. Maybe went back and visited after years go by. Steve, I was reminded your father passed not, I guess it's about a year, a day a year. And uh, I saw in my notes I had put that down. And uh, I guarantee you this, he wouldn't come back for anything in the world. He's experienced things that those old fleshly eyes could not see anymore. And in fact, they never could see because the veil was opened up for him. <laughs> and uh, I believe there's some folk that just need to be reminded that through it all, through everything we've gone through, through everything we've faced, he's been there with us. Uh, there's been a whole lot of stuff bring you sorrow. There's been a whole lot of stuff bring you pain. But I'm glad to tell you there's a God in heaven that knows all about your sorrow. He knows all about your hurt. 
He can turn it all around. Listen, while they sing this song, let's worship together. If you need to use these altars, it'd be a great time to do it.
service that you go get your kids because uh, I saw there was an ad for free kittens and we'll send them home with a brand new kitten. All right. Uh, so uh, if you have your Bible, turn to Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28. Um, I was seeking the Lord for a message this week and uh, he kept leading me back in this direction and I'm not going to try to change what God's Word says. I'm just going to try to preach it the best I know how, and I've preached out of this chapter several times, uh, chapter 27 and 28, some of my favorite uh, chapters in the book of Acts, and i um, preached out of those several times, and so if I say something that you heard before, uh, act like it's your first time, you just probably sleep the second the other time. Amen. It goes right there. All right. Acts chapter 28 and verse number 1. Acts chapter 28 and verse number 1. The Bible said, And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. When you read that uh, phrase in your Bible, we, we, we don't use that type of terminology and phrase a whole lot nowadays. Uh, but it basically means no little kindness, means great kindness. When they showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one. Because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire, and felt no I want to call your attention back to verse number three where the Bible said when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, uh, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. I want to preach a little while on this thought. Snakes crawl when the fire falls. Snakes crawl when the fire falls. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray God that you'd help us. I ask you, God, that you make preaching easy for us. God, give us a Holy Ghost hearing, that, God, we would hear uh, what you have to say to us. I don't want uh, these folk to hear a three-point outline. Lord, I want them to hear a word from God. And I ask you, God, that you would do that in this hour. Speak to us, and we'll thank you. We'll bless you for all that you do. We ask in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Uh, years ago, uh, in fact, about 15 or more years ago, uh, I first met, uh, I was looking for him, I think he took, uh, to, there's Jason. Uh, Jason and I, there he comes. I just, I, I met Jason uh, briefly for a week of intensive training on learning how to read meters. And uh, you wouldn't think it'd take a week uh, to learn how to read meters, but we were slow and it took us all week to do that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, in that, back then, 1995, May of 95, I went to work for Duke Power Company. And my illustrious career started as reading meters, reading electric meters. And I would walk through people's backyards, jump their fences, uh, get uh, chased by their dogs, spray their dogs, I zap their dogs sometimes and zap other things. And thus is the story that I'm getting ready to tell you. I, I was over at Craverton, I'll never forget this. 
And uh, they gave us this uh, big long uh, zapper. It had two nine volt batteries in it that somehow gave a whole lot of zap power. How did I know that? I'll tell you how I know that. One day I accidentally zapped myself and I was numb from the elbow down for about half the day. And so I was, uh, I saw this snake. Uh, if, you, if you got snakes at your house, don't invite me over. <laughs> you got problems if you got snakes as pets. Somebody say amen right there. And so uh, <laughs> I'll never forget <laughs> Miss Pam said, turning her head back there. Her daughter had some snakes and, had it, and we'd, we'd gone over there and the kids wanted to see those snakes and she started to bring them out the back room. I said, hold up, it's time to get going now. But this snake was slithering along. I mean, oh, Slewfoot laying down there, slithering along, oh, no legs down there, slithering along. I, I don't have to get bit by one. Just seeing one makes my skin crawl. And uh, I was big and bad, so I thought. And I took my zapper, kind of like a cattle prong. It was about two, two foot long or so. And I stuck that thing right on the, on the snake's head. And I pushed that button. Ta -da 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 -da. Man, it was like a machine gun going off. And I was like, glory to God. I, I felt the Shekinah glory coming down. Ta -da 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 -da. And that thing had wiggled when I let off. It wiggled up a little bit, Miss Joyce, to where I wasn't right behind his head no more. I was down on his body a little bit. And I laid it to him one more time. Da -da -da -da. And about that time, he turned back on me and said, Woo! So I felt something come from another world. And I ran like a girl. <laughs> I, I'm not a big fan of snakes. Uh, I, I think the reason most of us have those kinds of reaction towards snakes is the fact that we know snakes will attack. We know the snakes are not your friend. I read a story and I don't have time to go into it. But a lady had been keeping a, a snake and it was her pet. And it would, she let it lay in her bed and it coiled up in her bed. Yeah, these people walk among us. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell if it was you, Gara. <laughs> but one day it, it quit calling up in her bed, Juicy. And she was asleep. And that thing come and cuddled up beside, whoo, beside of her. And she thought, how cute. <laughs> cute. It wants to snuggle with me. It must be cold. She talked to somebody that was a snake expert. Said, ma'am, the best thing you can do is get that thing back in a cage or get rid of it right now. She said, it's my snake, my precious little fluffy. I can't get rid of it. Said, why should I do it? He said, the only reason a snake will do that is he's sizing you up to see if he can eat you. Uh -huh. You and I toy around with sin the same way. We mess around with sin the same way. It's just a toy down at the foot of the bed, curled up. If I need it, it's there. If I want it, it's there. If not, it just leave me alone. Oh no. One of these days, that sin you've been messing with is going to eat you up. It will attack you. This story, Paul has left in chapter number 27. They have left to go toward Rome. And Paul had told them, 
that they need that God had spoken to him. They need not sail because there would be a great shipwreck and loss of the ship. But the captain believed the all the people talking to him. There was a south wind that blew softly. You can read all this in chapter 27. And he decided, I want to get to this other island to spend the winter in because it's a better place. And so they sailed. When God's man said they shouldn't, they sailed and the ship ran into a storm called Uruguay. And they ran into that great storm. And the Bible said that many days they were out there. They didn't know if it was the daytime or nighttime. They didn't know where they were. They didn't know how long they were there. They were just stuck out in a storm. Finally, they started heading toward land. They sounded and they heard the echo. And they knew land was near. The Bible said that they threw out four anchors and wished for the day. And when they, when the day finally did break, between all that time, God's man had spent some time, and God talked to him, told him, you're going to be all right. All the rest of them are going to be all right, 276 of them. We're all going to be okay, but you're going to lose everything on the ship. And so they, when day, day finally did break, they headed toward a little inlet there, and the waves were so rough it broke up everything on the ship in so much that people had to jump off the ship. Uh, the only ones, uh, the ones that could not swim, uh, they jumped onto broken boards and broken pieces and rode that into land. Aren't you glad through the shipwrecks of life uh, that God will still let you grab a hold of some broken boards uh, and he'll use those broken boards uh, to get you to a place of safety. Amen. All that happens. And then they show up and there's this big welcoming party. And certainly you got to be thinking, well, God told me we was going to make it. Now, here's these barbarous people and they're showing us all this kindness. We are living in the favor of God. We have the touch of God on us. They certainly had God's man to fall with them. And in the middle of all that, Satan gets involved. Satan interjects himself. Look, look with verse number three. When Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, it was the then that the adder, or then that the viper, would strike at this one. He was active in doing something. Uh, I don't know, some of you have been in this thing for a while. Some of you have been in this Christian way for just a little bit. I'm going to teach you something this morning. Whether you've been serving God for 50 years, whether you've been serving God for five weeks, any time that God is blessing, you can expect that the devil will go to mess. Yes, any time God gets involved in a situation and there's activity going on over there, then Satan's going to make his way, slither his a sneaky self over in the middle of it. And then he's going to strike. He, he, it might not be at the time you'd expect it, but he's going to strike. And he's going to take out those people that are active and involved in doing the work of God. Being involved in the will of God. Some folks say, well, preacher, I just, I, I just don't know if it's worth serving God. I don't know if it's worth uh, getting involved in this thing of living for God or not. Because it seems like every time I do, then the struggle comes. Then the attack comes. You know you're on the right course, then. You know you're trying to get somewhere with God. 
pen. Ah, back in Acts chapter 17, maybe, I think it is, there was a guy that thought he was going to be like the rest of the disciples and cast out some demons. And he spoke to somebody that was demon possessed and said, get out. And the demon spoke back and said, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know, but who are you? There's some people that Satan knows their name. There's some folk that ain't giving him no trouble, no bother. Could very well be you're playing on his team when you're playing on his game. You know what I found to, to be the saddest situation in my years of serving God? Are there are those people that know to sing the right song. They know to say the right thing. They know to do the right stuff. But they don't know Jesus. They don't know him. See, you can sing all the right songs. You can quote verses until sun up till sundown. You can do all of that. But if you don't know Jesus, uh, uh, then there's no uh, future for you. Uh, in fact, the only thing you've got to look forward to is a place in hell with Satan. When Satan gets to attacking things that God's doing, when God gets to working, you can mark it down. Satan will go to get involved. Uh, some of the teams have gone over to help. But I guarantee you, Satan don't, don't like at all what's going on with our young people. He don't like at all what happened this week in Bible school. Had, had a little girl that sat right there on the front row. That, hallelujah. That uh, worked with a personal worker, bowed her head, and gave her heart and life to Jesus Christ. Amen. I guarantee you, Satan don't like that all. So we can expect when things like that start happening that Satan is going to get involved and Satan's going to get and start attacking. I, I'll tell you one more of my crocodile hunter stories. Years back, Crocodile Hunter was big on TV or whatever. And uh, I got to following him. And he went and handled the 10 most deadly snakes in the world. And he would rescue crocodiles and everything else. And I thought, I watched him do it, Ronnie. I mean, there wasn't nothing to it. Just watching him. And I had a wee wee. We moved in the house over in Mesmer City and an older lady had lived there and she had a little farm, our little garden spot out back in behind the house. And it was in a whole different lot and you could have taken a lawnmower in there and cut it. And I, I was about to try to run a weed eater in there. My neighbor could get a hold of anything and I, I asked him, I said, you ever run across a goat? Bring me a goat. He called me one day, said, come down here. I went down there and he not only got me one goat, but he had me two goats. A nanny goat and a billy goat. And I put them in that lot and then it was no time. They cleaned that thing out. Well, one day, I was walking around back there and there's a snake that was half in that lot and half in the, the regular lot. There's a chain link fence in between us. And uh, I done been watching crocodile hunting. I knew I could do it. I mean, if he could do it, I could do this. And uh, y'all know where this is going, don't you? <laughs> and uh, his head's on that side of the fence. I'm on this side of the fence. And I, I watched him do it. All you had to do is grab him by the tail and pick him up. That's all you had to do. That's what he did. Well, just suffice to say, your pastor is not Steve Irwin, all right? I reached down. I reached down and grabbed old no legs. Grabbed old sly. And I grabbed him by the tail and I picked him up. And about that time, he raised his little head. And he struck back at me. 
Now there's a fence between me and him, but your mind don't perceive all that before your feet start running and your voice starts screaming. So I picked him up and he and he put back at me and I went, Whoa! and I ran out of here. So Art's been trying to get me to preach up in West Virginia. The only reason, the only way that I'm going to do is there's got to be a guarantee. There'll be no snakes involved. Amen. It goes right there. <laughs> Satan attacks. The snakes come out and attack those that are active. Have you been attacked recently, maybe in your mind? Maybe Satan has unleashed his forces on your mind. If you're involved in doing something for God, I guarantee you. If you're trying to get closer to God, I guarantee you he will. I'm going to tell a story. I don't want to embarrass him too much, but my buddy Joey is here today. And he's, he, he drove further than anybody to get here. And uh, he's wanting to hear me preach, so I'm going to preach this as long as he wants to hear it. All right? I'm just kidding. But uh, he was out in California sometime a week or a week or two weeks ago now. And he got stuck in a little town called Holbrook, Arizona uh, uh, last Sunday. They ain't nothing in Holbrook, Arizona except maybe a Burger King and, and it's like one of them slash Burger King slash gas station slash laundromat. And uh, they ain't nothing there. And But I knew that. Because here a while back, Kelly and I went off to the Navajo Reservation. And we stayed in that little town called Holbrook. And I said, uh, Joey, I hate to hear you're stuck there. He's been stuck there till Monday. Because he couldn't get a pilot car to drive ahead of him till Monday. I said, I know a missionary up on the reservation. And if you'd like to go to church over there, then uh, I'll, I'll see what we can do. We made a few phone calls. He ended up getting a ride from somebody that helps there on the reservation. Picked him up and took him up and he got to spend the day with the Navajos. They were singing, Oh, how I love Jesus in that Navajo language. And uh, just got to experience something wonderful. And he and I talked over the weekend uh, during that time how that God's been dealing with his heart. But I guarantee you this, Joey. So every step you've tried to take in faith, I guarantee you this, Satan has tried to attack you. And he's going to attack you. So just go ahead and mark it down. These are just lies of the devil. You can pick him up by the tail if you want to. Amen. Ah, Because the Bible said that we are overcomers in him. We are the head and not the tail. Amen. That's what the Bible says. But notice the point of the attack. I want to spend a little time here. I'll share you. I'll share with you. I lost. I don't know what I did to the to the to the notes here. Look at verse number three. I'll just give you give it to you that. I lost number two. And when Paul had gathered a, st a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. Notice it attacked at the mold, at the movement of the hand. Where Paul was moving, where Paul was active, that's where it attacked. It grabbed a hold of his hand. You can expect when Satan attacks, it'll be at the place that you're trying to move forward and trying to move in faith in God. But this is really what I want to spend some time with here. It attacked at the moment that it became helpful. The Bible said, and he laid them on the fire. Now remember, they got there and they were wet. They got there it was raining. They got there it was cold. The barbarous people made them a fire to warm themselves. Paul saw that they needed a little bit of more wood, so he went out and gathered the wood. Seemingly, the snake was in that wood that he gathered, but it didn't strike him then, did it? 
Didn't strike him until he threw it on the fire. The moment that that wood became helpful to somebody else is the moment that that snake jumped up and bit him. You say, well, preacher, it's because he got hurt here. Uh, I know that. But I also know there's a deeper truth. God wants you and I to pour into others' lives. He wants what you go through and what I go through to be a help to somebody else. He wants the hurt that you, he's allowed you to go through for you to be able to sow into somebody else's life that hadn't been through that yet. And you to be able to tell them, oh, it hurts, but the sun will shine again. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. You might feel like that'll never end, but I'm here to tell you uh, I, that God has brought me through it, and because God has brought me through it, he can bring you through it as well. Just when God is helping people, Satan makes the strongest attacks. <laughs> God gets active, gets involved, and gets folks stirred in the church. Things start happening. Satan's been laying, laying dormant in those wood pews for a while. But then when things start happening, he raises up, don't he? wants to attack. The sad truth of this message is this. I've been pastor now for 18 years, a little bit, and I can't think even through the pandemic, I can't think of one time that we were attacked from outside our church. I can't think that it's ever happened. Every time we've ever gone through anything of an attack, it rose up and defeated the church. Sad truth is that Satan has got a, got a listening ear. <laughs> you ever thought about Adam and Eve? Eve was talking to a snake. A snake. No, I know, I know. Theologically, it was not uh, cursed and all that kind of stuff yet. But Eve's talking to the serpent, and he beguiled her. <laughs> Somebody's listening to what Satan's got to say. Some of you right now are just thinking, well, I know they came back, and they're all excited for that youth conference. I know that... Man, they, those kids, they, they're excited because they had a lot of fun in Bible school. And I know there's people that are, are just happy about seeing that happen. But I'm just going to tell you, there ain't nobody listening to my complaint about the toilet paper is too hard. I, I'm, 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 I'm exaggerating. I, I don't think anybody's can and said that yet. If it is too hard, you're welcome to go buy the soft plow. <laughs> buy big cases and we'll fill it all up. Amen. Ah. <laughs> uh, but every time when God starts doing something, you can mark it down. Satan's got a snake slithering around, getting ready to bite. <laughs> Here's the last thing, and I'll, I'll hush. Look in verse number five. Verse number five says this. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. The practice that avails. What we do that brings us out of it. Hell, if you want to come to the piano. Ah. Uh, <laughs> When Paul <coughs> threw those sticks down into the fire, that snake jumped up. There had to be some courage involved. 
to stay right there by the fire and not run off like I would have screaming like a girl. But Paul stood right there as it waxed on his hand and he shook it off. Now, before any of that happened, before he was able to shake it off, verse number four happened. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hanging on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man's a murderer. Who though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not. He was supposed to die in the shipwreck and vengeance has come to get a payday on him. Sent a snake after him. He was critiqued. He, he was exposed to some criticism. How many of you know there's a whole lot of people got a whole lot to say about what you're doing, how you're serving God? What I found is a lot of times the people that have so much to say ain't doing a whole lot. Because when you're busy doing something for God, a lot of times you don't have time to look around at everybody else. He didn't listen to the criticism. He didn't listen to the compliment either. Verse number six, after he shook it off, verse six said, how be it? They looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while, saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. The, the, just a minute ago, he's a murderer. He should have died in the shipwreck. Now they're ready to bow down to him. He's a god. Paul didn't listen to that either. He didn't listen to the criticism. He didn't listen to the compliments. He didn't do you well, child of God. You're going to serve God to learn to do both. Don't listen to the compliments. Don't listen to the criticisms. Because there, y'all ain't going to believe what I'm getting ready to tell you. But there are some people, they might sit in this room, that think that I'm one of the best preachers they've ever heard. Then there's some people that <coughs> they wouldn't go out back to the wood pile to listen to me preach another time. There's some people that can't stand to hear my name. I know it's hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe too, y'all. I, mean, I know. <laughs> but you know what? I don't pay a whole lot of mind to either one. I ain't trying to get a lot of people off and out with me and that. I ain't trying to build no fan club either. What I'm trying to do is serve God the best I can. What I'm trying to do is hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful son. The Bible said he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. If you go and serve God, if our church is going to be used mightily by God, we're going to have to learn to shake some stuff off. I'll tell you a little story. This one don't have to, have to do with me dealing with a, with a literal snake, but more of a figure. Several years back, we had a situation that happened in church. It, it was some, It was a in a family, uh, something that had taken place. And the person came to me, wanted me to deal with this situation because they thought they had, they had to be dealing with it. And I tried to do what the Bible says in Matthew 18, by the way, that's, that's a good place to start. Go to the person, you can't get, get worked out, then bring somebody else involved, you, bring, you can't get it worked out, go to the whole church. And uh, I tried to, even though they'd skipped, pretty much skipped that first step, I tried to help them. And it just wasn't, wasn't no satisfying the situation. And 
I can watch week after week is that figurative snake went around to different people. Slithering, flicking its long tongue, telling all this stuff. By the way, usually when they tell it to you, be careful what they'll say about you to somebody else. <laughs> and uh, thankfully, we had enough people that said, no, I'm just going to shake it off into the fire. It wasn't long before I saw that old snake slither out the back door and ain't been back yet. And I will, I will rejoice that people leaving and stuff like that, but when a snake leaves, We'll see you later. Get on down the road somewhere else. You pray for them. You, and you, 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 if, that's, if that hurts you. Shake it off. You know what they said about you? Shake it off. You know what they did to you? Shake it off. You know what Satan's been whispering to you? Shake it off. You know, all that stuff that keeps coming up in your mind, shake it off. I want to see the fire of God grow. And I want to see the people of God go. I want to see the glory of God grow. I want to see it all increase and go on. And if we're going to do that, we're going to have to learn when the fire falls, snakes will crawl. But we can shake it off and move on for the glory of God. I want you to stand with me, if you will. I wonder how many of us, if you're a member here or you're a regular attender, how many of us would come and, by faith, come down to these altars and say, God, I want to be part of the fire continuing to spread and go and grow. Come on. Lord, I will be guilty. I'm listening to the devil's lies and whispers and being bit by old slow food. Here we come, here we come. Many of us are coming. Lord, help me, help us to go and to grow in what you have started in this place. Lord, do for us what you desire and what you purpose and plan. Lord, I don't want to be a hindrance to what you're doing. Maybe you just want to come down here and say, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, God, that I did not get what I deserved. Should have been in hell. But here I am, saved, washed by the blood. Lord, I want to thank you for that. Maybe you're here as these are praying. You're here and say, Preacher, Preacher, I'm going through some stuff. I'm struggling. I need some help. Here's my hand. And I wonder how many would throw our hands up. Here's my hand, Preacher. Would you help me? We see those. We see those. Are there more? Here's my hand, Preacher. Preacher, I... I need God to help me with some things in my life right now. We see those. We see those. Thank you for being honest. Here's my hand, preacher. We're getting ready to pray. You're here and say, preacher, I'm not 100% sure that I'm saved. I do not know without the shadow of a doubt that I'm ready to meet God like I am. Would you pray for me? Is there somebody like that? Here's my hand. I won't come to you. I won't embarrass you. I won't call you out, but I will pray for you. Preacher, here's my hand. Please pray for me. I do not know that I'm ready to meet God. Please pray for me. Father, in Jesus' name, we've done our best to try to share the Word of God and be a help to uh, your children and a help to your uh, people in this place and this hour. Lord, I just pray that you'd have uh, your will and your way in all that's said and all that's done. God, do for us in this time 
that that uh, only you can do. The Lord touch us and help us. I thank you, God, for what you've done. I thank you, God, for what you're going to do. The Lord speak to us as we go today. God, help this church to go and to grow uh, in the good things of God. And I'll thank you and I'll bless you. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. God's people said. <laughs>